We're sending out those good vibes. The folks at Apollo Neuroscience are sponsoring this video to chat about the science behind vibrations affecting our mood and our nervous system health. The practical demonstration of this is represented in a wearable. It's not a smartwatch or a fitness band. It's a gadget strapped to your wrist or ankle or clipped somewhere on your body that aims to influence your mood through pulses and vibrations. It's not a fitness tracker that's taking information about your body. It's trying to send information to your body. Disclaimer at the top of this video. I I am not a neuroscientist, but my experiences in recording and other biological feedback devices made this claim an interesting one to take a look at. I've been a huge fan of some of the other wacky entertainment gadgets, like strapping vibration motors to our limbs to simulate the feeling of standing in front of a subwoofer. There's something really interesting about tapping into the body's sense of touch for a more subtle and positive effect. Apollo is calling this touch therapy. The hardware here is simple. It's a purpose-built gadget designed to deliver a series of sensations. The haptics in the device are designed by Lofelt, the company who made that wrist subwoofer I mentioned just a second ago, and the operation of the wearable is controlled through two small buttons on the case, and then routines are created in an app on your phone. Apollo includes a little plastic clip and a medium-sized wrist strap, perfect for my wrist, but not quite long enough to wear around my ankle. There are other straps sold separately. And I honestly don't think it would be too difficult to make your own. It's just sort of a simple strap through a little clip at the top of the casing. It's a big haptic motor, delivering a more detailed response than the motors in a lot of our smartwatches. But driving that motor in a little wearable case, that has an impact on battery life. Apollo rates this wearable for six to eight hours of operation, but it's not meant to be driven constantly throughout the day and night. Apollo recommends consistent use over shorter periods of time throughout the day for the best results. Consistency is key, and I was charging mine every other day while testing it. Charging, unfortunately, takes place over an exposed micro USB port, which I wish was USB-C for broader cable compatibility, but the overall build seems like it should be decently lifestyle durable. It's a plastic shell and there aren't any other fragile bits like a screen or a crown to worry about. The setup is really simple too. You just pair it over Bluetooth and then you can dial in specific moods that you're hoping to achieve through the Apollo app. If you're looking for a bit more pep in your step or you're trying to unwind at the end of the day. Once you select a mood, it brings up a little slider to control the intensity and the duration. And then you can fine tune the intensity using the buttons on the wearable. Once a mood or routine is selected, you don't need to pay any more attention to the app. The operation of the wearable should blend into the background of your day. It's not something that you should be constantly adjusting. I feel silly saying the wearable, and I keep wanting to call it a watch, but it's not a watch. It's a body feedback system that you wear. I digress. I only used it in manual operation and I set up my own schedule, but Apollo does sell a yearly subscription that can give you more data on your moods, and it includes some interesting perks like like activating in your sleep cycle if the wearable detects you might be waking up in the middle of the night. I can't comment on those modes specifically, but explaining just the hardware here, that's simple enough. What is it like to actually wear the Apollo wearable? In explaining my bias, you're gonna have to pardon I really enjoy exploring tech that claims to tinker with our brains. I think there's a lot of unexplored potential in audio and touch systems for practical computing, like lane guidance in a car. We can throw another optical alert at a driver, but what if your seat just vibrated on the side of the body where you might be drifting out of a lane? Those practical applications are really fun, like an entertaining music add-on using haptics to mimic a subwoofer. Our bodies kind of like that sensation. But what Apollo is claiming is something a little different. We know that music can influence your mood, and we know that touch can influence your mood. So what if we tried to create some of that stimulus free from the traditional delivery methods like music? Strapped the Apollo onto my wrist, connected it to my phone, fired it up, and the default intensity was more aggressive than I was expecting. And for a second, I had to wonder if that's what my arm would feel like if I was having a stroke. So back into the app, dialed down the intensity, and Apollo recommends a setting that hovers just under what you would consider noticeable or distracting. It's a product that should fade into the background of your day, not something that should be pulling you out of what you're trying to pay attention to. As someone who appreciates the scientific method and loves a good double-blind study, it's difficult for me to arrive at any conclusive claims about using this product. This video cannot be a review. I am a sample size of one, 
I've been wearing it for a couple weeks and through a pretty stressful time of year. I'm inclined to say it contributes to a better mood. I came up with a schedule for more activity in the mid-afternoon and some calming effects later in the evening. It's really difficult for me to say that's exactly what the wearable is doing to my body and my brain as I feel it did contribute to that pattern during my work week. I cannot directly compare to how I might have felt had I not been wearing it. But for what this company is claiming, I liked what I felt it was doing. It is tricky. It's part of the difficulty in describing this effect. You know, a lot of folks made fun of me when I tried out that wearable subwoofer, that it was pricey and for some reason a, a wearable or a watch needs to be all things to all people and it should have had fitness tracking and a ton of extra functionality, but the effect on music was rad. What it contributed to listening to audio was a lot of fun. And I think it's a shame that more people weren't game to try a single purpose wearable like that. Apollo is doing something even a little more different. This is way more subtle. And I cannot deny that a part of this might be the mindfulness of taking care of yourself. Someone who's already inclined to spend money on a product like this, who likes to wear something like this, they might already be in the correct headspace to see better results from a product like this. I'm exactly that kind of person. But at the very least, I, I have to wonder if this isn't the touch equivalent of contributing stimulus that our bodies might be lacking. It's, it's kind of like listening to some lo-fi music in the background to help with attention. Maybe our nervous system is being starved for other experiences during the day, and something like the Apollo wearable is helping to contribute some of that information. What I can't quite nail down as a sample size of one person. Apollo does link to several data sheets and studies conducted on this method of therapy. I really appreciate that they stay far away from words like cure, but if you'd like a deeper read on the science of this, I'll of course link that below. Some of this data collected in collaboration with folks wearing the Aura Ring to see what effects there might be on sleep and cardiovascular health. So the Apollo wearable, I'm gonna keep wearing it. If you'd like a follow-up in a couple of months, please drop some comments down below. If this is something that we'd like to kind of keep a more regular beat on, if we'd like to have other conversations. And of course, check out the links for more info, where you might be able to shop one, and maybe smash that bell icon while you're down there. YouTubes. I appreciate you all sticking with this video. Haptics are an exciting and underexplored area for future gadgets, entertainment, and health systems. There's a lot more we could be doing with touch. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been amazing. Those of you uh, who have uh, been clicking on links in the video descriptions, checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe and I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy, basically everywhere, but these days I'm spending a bit more of my time on the Mastodons, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Twitters, and I will catch you all on the next video.